Today we are at Texas A&M Roadway Test Site. For high-end applications like transportation, it's important to understand what accuracy you get from these different types of sensors. In this video, we're going to introduce you to the advanced research that Texas A&M Mantis Lab is doing. We'll explore their data and their findings around LiDAR accuracy to support DOT applications. And stick around to the end of this video and Mike will show you how you can get started making great money in drone LiDAR. So Mike, could you tell me, uh, first off, for our viewers, uh, who you are and, uh, and what, what you're currently doing? Yeah, so I'm Mike Steer, and I'm a professor of geospatial system engineering at Texas A&M University, Corpus Christi. And so I'm part of the Conrad Blucher Institute for Surveying and Science as well, and I have a research lab called Mantis for Measurement Analytics, and we work on a lot of geomatics type problems. Um, but of course, uh, uncrewed aircraft systems or drones are one of our big areas, and we do a lot of work in both photogrammetry and LIDAR. And so with Phoenix LIDAR systems, we've been evaluating, um, originally we started working with Phoenix, and we procured uh, the, the original Regal Vux 1LR sensor that we still have, still an amazing sensor to this day. Right on. Yeah, we're also comparing that with, we work with Phoenix to integrate onto our UAS platform also, uh, the Live Oxavia, which is a miniaturized lower cost LiDAR sensor. Um, so that's the, that's the recon. Yeah, it's the recon package, right? recon package, but the heart of that is the, the Live Oxavia LiDAR, but the recon package with Phoenix. And so we can swap it on the same drone. Um, mm -hmm. The drone is a free fly out there. We basically swap the payloads, which is really nice. And then, uh, for some of our, for one of our projects, we have several different projects, but for the Department of Transportation, Texas Department of Transportation, one of the things we're looking at is the difference in performance between these, you know, quote unquote, survey grade or what I would call geodetic grade LIDARs that are still compact enough to carry on a small UAS. I'll grant it a large small UAS, but mm -hmm. according to the FAA, 55 pounds or less with takeoff weight <laughs> first. Versus these more lower cost lighters that we're seeing coming out, right? A lot of this was spurred by the autonomous vehicle industry and other things. And people realize, hey, we can not only sense and avoid and, and localize our scene, but we can reverse them for geomatics applications for mapping and surveying. And so the big push in the, in the drone space that we see is more with the miniaturized sensors, because for one, they're a lot easier to fly. You can get just easier, meaning you can get longer flight times out of them, generally speaking. Right. Um, not as big a payload, uh, these kinds of things. Um, but the question is, you know, where, where is the trade-off between these miniaturized, you know, lower end type ladder sensors versus the traditional kind of survey grade ladders that are portable enough on small UAS. So for that project, we are comparing the Vux LR versus the, uh, you know, the VIA in terms of performance, um, mm -hmm. both, you know, relative accuracy or precision, as you saw some of those examples, yeah. um, vegetation penetration is a big one. Um, but also efficiency in flight and other things, data processing differences, data cleanup, all that kind of stuff. Well, and you bring out a good point, like, you know, um, you know, being that I was on ARSPS, you know, as, as the director of UAS division and on the LIDAR standards team, it's been a real concern of ours, like as these compact sensors come out, you know, how compatible they are to, you know, to professional industry standards like the DOT. So I really like how we're going to dive into comparing, you know, the Ranger versus, you know, the Recon A, because um, this, this is really important research. Now, really quick, why do, why do the transportation department, why are they even interested in drones? They've got these high-end mobile scanners. So what other things are they looking to use drones to augment what they're doing or their contractors? Right. So... You know, one of the big things, well, at least with the DOT, and I should mention, you know, we're working with the, with Phoenix um, and using the U.S. ladder systems, not just in DOT work, but a lot of coastal work. Wetlands is a big area for wetland monitoring, mm -hmm. other things like that. Um, and as you mentioned, the Phoenix name is the Ranger system. So by Ranger, we have a Regal Vux LR integrated into the Ranger package that mm -hmm. Phoenix worked with us. And then the recon system is, is what Phoenix worked with us on to integrate the Live Oxavia yeah. Um, so those are kind of the two packages and, you know, it's not just a sensor. It's also the quality of the IMU or initial measurement unit and the GNSS or GPS on board and integrated with that system. So there are other factors, obviously, that influence the absolute accuracy, but ultimately at the heart of it is the ladder scanner. 
Um, but the DOT in terms of, of drones or UAS, um, one of the biggest things, and there's a lot of different applications. So we started working with them actually on crash scene reconstruction. Um, and, you know, Department of Public Safety here in Texas was integrating small UAS, uh, but there's a real interest in right how, how they can be mm -hmm. used as opposed to terrestrial approaches. For one thing, um, fatal car wrecks, you have to shut down highways, uh, which nobody wants to do. Uh, it's a big yeah. issue. So it's so more efficient. You can get that data collected. And we were looking at initially photogrammetry at the time. And even in low light conditions, rain, nighttime, you use headlights for vehicles, other things. But ultimately, it was about getting that data um, quickly and efficiently so that they could clear the scene, um, document what happened, uh, determine what happened if it goes to court, those kinds of things. So that was where we started. But the big push now is really on the surveying side. Um, and uh, just simply put, surveyors are, are feet on the ground, right? Yep. Traditional land surveying is always going to be critical. We always need it. But it's just the way they're looking at it. And, and a lot of different DOTs are exploring. And I can only speak here for the state of Texas and what we're working on. Um, but it's, it's just a tool to try to figure out how best to integrate in their workflows and supplement what they're doing. Um, it's not going to solve everything, mm -hmm. but it can definitely uh, improve the efficiency of geospatial data collection in certain scenarios. It can reduce cost. So you mentioned, yes, there are mobile ladder systems and other things. Those are great. They're high end. They're expensive. There are needs, uh, times for that. Long story short, it's, you know, it's about how to adopt and integrate the technology to basically, um, you know, improve safety, enhance their survey workflows, mm -hmm. you know, help make, make, make data collection more efficient. Um, and, you know, and identify what use cases, uh, small U.S., whether with LIDAR or photogrammetry are appropriate. Um, and then that also extends to their contractors. There's a lot of uh, still, even it may, for those that work in the field, we may think, oh, it's been around a while. But there's still a lot of uh, uncertainty, hesitation in how best to adopt them. Right. Um, obviously, accuracy is very important. Um, you know, and there are cases where the accuracy isn't as, as imperative. And, and so it could be useful there. But when you have a high-end accuracy need for specific specs that DOTs have, um, then that's where the big question becomes in this case, you know, why we're looking at a geodetic grade or, or, you know, high end, uh, UAS mapping system, like the Ranger system by Phoenix versus the recon system and pros and cons. Um, and so, so that's kind of the idea, but it's, it's really how to, to integrate them into their survey workflows, just like GPS came about, airborne LIDAR came about mobile mm -hmm. LIDAR. It's another platform. Um, you know, the way I look at it is scale. I mean, there are certain size projects where it's at this moment with regulations and, and certain things where, where small UAS are appropriate. Um, but also just, just trying to reduce the time of uh, surveyors on the ground. We actually go out on these projects and collect the data ourselves with myself and my team and my students. So I'm very familiar with the hard hat, the vest and the boots standing on the sides of highways. And believe me, um, you know, in 110 degree West Texas heat, it's dangerous. Yeah, it's dangerous, let alone being out there in the heat in the summer in Texas, especially this year. So just ways to reduce that time on the ground for the surveyors is one of the other just very simple but important things um, that we're looking at with small UAS and uh, specifically with LIDAR yeah. and photogram. What I appreciate, again, is that, um, it, you know, yes, a road scanner is the preferred tool, but you're doing the science. Like a lot of engineering firms are already kind of implementing it and they're kind of using it to augment what they have but what you're doing with the state of texas is more critical in that you're doing the science and documenting to set the standards that these engineering firms can kind of use as a guideline and i think that's that's really important it shouldn't be overshadowed here right and and for and for the dot themselves um because they're also looking to integrate within their you know within the districts within within the the surveyors in those districts, these tools to help, you know, optimize their workflows, just like working with total stations, and, uh, you know, yes, GPS, GNSS, those things. So it's also not only with the contractors and understanding that element, but, but also just how they themselves internally can integrate them more efficiently and effectively. Um, Excellent. Into their workflows. And, and so, so we're trying to assist with that as well. This kind of take a bit to explain, but this is actually showing the error between different vegetation and terrain types, tall vegetation, low, but overall the LIDAR, the big thing is this color blue here. Um, you know, at least in this test, uh, you can see the performance. Oh yeah. Okay. So, so the, all right. So the, uh, the bar on the left 
you know, is, is the accuracy, vertical accuracy, and then across is the different variants. Okay. And then um, it looks like you yeah. did samples yeah, 90 different. to 60 and then, 90 and then 120, 120. Yeah, we were doing difference between photogrammetry and LiDAR as an example. So this is just the VUX versus a photogrammetry. Now, I don't want to, I don't know how much, I, I don't want to like target out Wintra, but. um, <laughs> I like those guys. Like, you know, I could just, I can. Because Wintra is a drone. And yes, they've got a, a 42 megapixel camera. I used to sell their equipment. I'm actually good friends with them. Yeah. Um, it's just so, a photogrammetry difference. It's not really trying to target the platform. The platform is excellent. It's it's just the uh, photogrammetry difference is what we're looking at. Um, yeah, exactly. Sensor performance. This is pretty interesting, the dropout. So just showing you differences. And then probably the other one that's of interest, if we want to talk about the sensor, this is uh, surface roughness between the Vox Diavia and the in photogrammetry on a flat runway. And as we zoom in here, mm -hmm. what we're seeing is, um, you know, the, the, this, so if it's a perfect precise sensor, it would be zero because it's basically a flat runway for the most part, It'd be very small, but you can see the Vox, the precision is much higher. It's down around, this is in a, meters so around three millimeter surface roughness so we're basically computing the very variability in the height yeah in like one foot little circles as we move along the runway so we're just gridding it and then what we did then is we actually um uh, let's see here we plot it and so this is the uh just the flight we did on one day this is the vox lidar and you can see it's about uh standard deviation in the z so these are just little circles where we draw patches along the runway it's about yeah three millimeter and then here's the avia it's about 14 millimeters so you can see the difference in precision real quick it's a flat runway so if this was perfectly precise it should be near zero and you're seeing here just the precision as we we move along with this box slider is um extremely. yeah so you have better precision um right so you can but see what is that what does that mean for for dot well, because if you want to do surface gradients or asphalting, I mean, they care about that super heavily. So normally they're driving really, you know, they're driving vehicles with uh, really precise lighters on, on vehicles that shoot straight down for pavement gradients. But yeah. in this case, um, we're doing it from a drone, but it's just showing the difference in the performance of that sensor. So if you care about really high end precision, you know, that's the, t the difference in a $2,000 lighter versus you know, in this case, the Vux at the time, this is the Vux 1 LR, so it's, you know, over a $100,000 sensor, but that quality of the LiDAR is what you're really seeing. And this is where it pops out. It gets occluded when you're in vegetation or right other areas like that. But when, when this matters, um, which yeah. it does, we're concerned about surface gradients and real high end precision and other things like that, where they, where they want to understand that better. Um, it's, it's mm -hmm. showing that and performance and then of course that relates overall to accuracy too i mean ultimately absolute accuracy um which of yeah. course goes back to your referencing but that's a significant difference and if you look at the photogrammetry they're actually pretty similar so that, that's kind of a neat finding here this is a camera versus an avia but you get this higher end sensor and you can see that ranging precision is where it pops out so if that's something you're concerned about. You want to measure that surface flatness or roughness as, as precisely right. as possible. Um, this is where these higher end sensors come into play. Another example. Yeah, and so it, it basically introduces some variation that could really lead an engineer off track when you're talking about DOT work. Yeah, if you're pa pavement, there are specifications in DOT, but it doesn't stop there. There may be other applications where that's important, bridge assessments or structural type things. Um, but in the geological world, I mean, I'm not a geoscientist necessarily, but uh, they may have precise, especially in micro, micro topography, um, agriculture, other areas like that, soils, that may be important. Mm -hmm. Another example is the difference in we did a test where we flew the same altitude right between the Vux. So this mm -hmm. is the Vux LR. So this is just mm -hmm. an experiment. We're actually mapping, in this case, more looking at vegetation penetration capability between them. Yes. Over that had mixed land cover, including kind of a stream under a forest. But interestingly enough, this is our first experiment with the, uh, with the Avia versus the Vux LR when we just got it integrated onto our platform that we were flying. And we wanted to test the same altitude, try to design the same flight design. But you can see the drop off on the pavement because there wasn't enough reflectivity um, relative to yeah. the wavelength of the distance we were flying. So 
you know, lesson learned, we need to fly the via lower to get, get signal off of that pavement. Whereas the high end Vox, you know, no problems. It pops out that pavement really, really well. So it's just showing those differences. Um, yeah. And for, for our viewers yeah. that has an efficiency cost, you know, if you can fly higher, you get a, a better capture width. Right. If you fly higher, you can capture more. Um, it's just, again, the difference in the performance of that sensor. And that's really what we were going at um, mm -hmm. in this case. And then let me see if, if this is the one where, yeah, so you can see here, here's the Vox, you know, all points, the Avia all points. And then, you know, we ran a classifier and we stripped away. But the big thing is you can see the penetration under the forest canopy just due to that oh, yeah. higher pulse, higher energy. So this is your bank. Well, and just to block. unpack this, all that black area that you're seeing is shadow under vegetation. Just didn't get returns, right? Yeah. yeah so it was included. Um, so when we ran our filter, and that doesn't mean, of course, maybe we misclassified in places, but we try to run apples to apples. Uh, we had less ground returns from the Avia um, under the canopy, significantly less. And if we want to model the drainage, which is what this study was about, we're actually looking at. Yeah, going back to this, um, again, the Vox up here and then the Avia down here, and, and this is kind of a terrain classified or ground classified points, but under that canopy, you can see that energy penetration, the uh, uh, pulse rate. Um, we are able to reconstruct the surface below that canopy much better with the Vox in this case. And so, you know, that's a trade off in sensor performance when that matters. Um, However, over exposed ground or other areas where it's low vegetation, you know, a lower cost of via can work quite well and it's more, you know, it's easier to fly. I'll say that compared to these heavier payloads. But right. uh, this is really important in this case because actually they were very concerned about the drainage modeling in here. And this is where, you know, a high end sensor like the Vux, a geodetic grade sensor, or what I would call a survey grade sensor, can, can, can really outperform you know, some of these uh, miniaturized lower end. LIDARs, which work quite well, um, but you, know, you can see the difference. So that difference in precision, you know, ranging distance, um, mm -hmm. pulse penetration, um, I would say um, signal to noise ratio, because you're getting these very precise clouds. It's not as noisy. Uh, if I was able to show you, I can show you the fuzziness and the difference in the clouds, which is what really that surface roughness example I showed is basically quantifying. Are you now you talking, when you're talking about that, uh, Mike, are you talking about the, uh, the relative accuracy of the cloud and how f the fuzz, so to speak, are you also talking about artifacts that to kind of show up in the air? So no, the fuzz, the fuzz. So this again, going back to this kind of hard to see, but I'll go back up to here. This is just color coding mm -hmm. a grid between the, the, the vertical variability and the Z value, the height, um, and basically one foot grids along a runway, a flat runway. So it's very flat. Yeah. There is, or slight variability, but this is basically counting, it's basically the relative accuracy of the point cloud or the precision, which directly relates to the ranging accuracy and other things, or the ranging precision of that sensor. So that crack in the middle of um, of the blue screen, which is our, our uh, you know, our ranger here, is not even showing up with the Avia or the the, uh, the photogrammetry. Right, right. You so can see a little, you can see a little bit of the divots and you can almost see where the concrete's been um, yep. God, I forgot what they, when I used to do cocker used to be like a, um, like a curing on the top. So right. you can well, see the swishes of the, what's that? Yeah. So this is, this is an old runway at a Relis College station. Uh, it used to be a, a, a military runway. So we run experiments out there, but it's, um, you know, it's kind of these like big concrete type revetted, uh, blocks. But what basically the, the main thing that we're looking at here though, just to simplify, we're in millimeter scale vertical uh, precision along this runway versus centimeter right. scale between the Avia and the wing trough. And then what we did is that's nice. It's a nice visualization, but here we're literally quantifying it. So to explain this in a simple case, what we do is we just randomly extract uh, one foot radius circles along, along the runway, just a circle, right. a diameter of one foot, just randomly. So we did 10,000 of them. And in there, we take the, all the points that fall in that circle, we compute, uh, the standard deviation in the Z. Since it's flat, right. theoretically, it's or close to near flat, it should be very small. And so we do that over 10,000 patches. And then this number here, if you can see it, is the average. And so that's four millimeters of Z variability. And this is the Vox. And these are two flights. We flew the same runway day one, day two. Four mm -hmm. millimeters, five millimeters. 
very consistent, very good. We go to the Avia. Now we're at 14 millimeters day one, 16 millimeters day two. And it, so you can see that, that, that fuzziness. So if I was to show you the point cloud, you would see it more fuzzy uh, with the Avia versus, versus that box. But this just quantifies right. it. And that's an order of magnitude. May not seem like a lot, but this does matter in certain cases, that level of precision. I mean, you know, it depends on your application and those kinds of things. But Well, like you said, when you're that, doing micro topography, it matters quite a bit. Yeah, it which can is matter DOT work. quite a bit. Um, right. Or yeah, DOT grading, those kinds of things, it does matter, um, in those cases. So it's just, just an interesting example, um, of mm -hmm. comparing the sensor. And then as I showed earlier, uh, if we can go back, uh, not to this one, but again, to, uh, like this case where you're looking at, you know, the dropout due to the energy, the pulse energy, and, uh, just, just the difference between, a, um, you know, something that's got a lot more signal to noise versus the Avia you know, which is a more miniaturized sensor, um, but in the reflectivity dropout due to that altitude. So to fix it, we got, we have to fly lower. Um, right. Relative to the lux. So, yeah, so that's efficiency, right? As you mentioned earlier. And of course, if regulations or you have a waiver to even fly higher, um, then you get even more bang for your buck with something like, like the bucks. So if somebody has, has watched this, how would they get in touch with you and how would they learn more about what you're doing? If you're really interested in this, um, again, I'm at Texas A&M University of Corpus Christi. We have one of the true geomatics programs in the country, an undergraduate level program that's uh, accredited by the engineering board. Um, and we do geographic information systems and surveying technology and, and surveying science in one degree. And you can study things like drones and LIDAR point clouds, but also the fundamentals of surveying is very, very important. And we do have a mm -hmm. real shortage. It's uh, you would not believe every week we get companies looking for students. I don't care if you can get through, you, you, you could barely pass all your classes. You are guaranteed a job, well-paying if you graduate. <laughs> it's one of the few degrees where I could tell a student, as long as you complete the degree, you can be the worst student in the world. <laughs> as long as you complete the degree, pass your classes and get out, you are guaranteed a job. I and mean, we have way more companies looking for students than we have to offer. Um, yes, there is a shortage. It's probably more on our end, on the industry and, and, and academia and selling this field. It is a, you know, geomatics. What does that mean? A lot of people don't know. Um, but, but the job opportunities are just, just incredible. And it's a fun field. You can work inside if you like computing and, and computers. You can do that. If you like to get outdoors, you can do that. Um, but reach out. We'd love to, even if, uh, you know, just want to learn more about the field and you see this and, and are interested, reach out to me. Happy to talk to you about it. I'll put the link for that information so they can get a hold of you and, and learn more about the program down in the description below. And uh, okay, so with that, hey, Michael, thank you so much for for you know sharing your wisdom with us and and these use cases. I'm sure this is going to help a lot of people, um, you know, with transportation, with lighter, which picking the different sensors. This has been an incredible interview. Thank you so much.